All right, now we're going to start with a very big project and hope it succeeds. And that is to record uh, an encyclopedia, not record it, but get videos. Um, um, we want to be able to go through a whole long list of subjects that come up in singing and have come up in the past and are coming up in the, in the present. Um, and we want to discuss actually things that great singers recommended. And we'll simply pick subjects. Uh, right now I have them listed alphabetically. And uh, there are a lot of them. Right now, this group I have right now is 394 of them. I think it's in 394, something like that. So we can make videos and do every bit of that if anyone has the stamina. <laughs> the, the German called Zitzfleisch. Zitzfleisch, which means seating meat. Can you sit on your meat that long and do all this? Well, you don't have to do all at once either. You can spend, a, who knows, years learning to do these. So number one, in, this is, these are mostly called instigators because they call something to happen in the voice. So to instigate a process, we start something. The first one is uh, the 40-step the walk. And the 40-step walk was a way of breathing, doing breathing exercises at Caruso of practice. It started with Garcia having timing, everyone counting, but, you know, sitting still. And then Caruso uh, somehow decided that he would walk at the same time. And he started walking anyway, walking just to get outside and have some exercise and so forth. So he started counting his steps. So the idea is to breathe in, that means inhale, for 10 paces or 10 steps. Make sure you're full by the time you get to 10 so that you can start now over and count 10 again. And so this time, you're going to hold all of that breath. You're going to maintain uh, keeping the breath inside your body. You're going to keep it down your lower ribs. You're going to keep the lungs extended down low. And you're going to keep your throat open. In other words, you keep. I'm going to breathe. And then I'm going to keep whatever uh, reaction that gave me. And I hope it will open my throat vertically. And I'll have any number of ways to, to now benefit from such a breathing exercise. And those of you who want to can add something like snoring. Uh, and you can snore for 10, for 10 seconds and then hold it for 10 seconds. Then you exhale for 10 seconds. And some people do it with a noise. Some people just go silently. Silent breathing is one of the most important things you can learn in singing. And once you've done 10 of each of those, which means in, hold, out, now you have to, for the last 10, you have to hold empty. And while you're inhaling, your abdomen is moving inward, right? And like a snor what snoring does, snoring will draw your whole belly in. It's like one of those uh, yoga exercises where your whole belly goes in like that. Um, and then when you're holding it, you're holding your belly in, you're holding your back open, you're holding everything down inside. When you start to exhale, then gradually that opening process that happened in the lower ribs and the lower back suddenly begins to close like this and it closes and you must maintain it very evenly keep your exhalation for 10 seconds uh and or if we were walking we'd be doing 10 steps the idea is to do it outdoors when you're walking 10 steps in 10 steps hold 10 steps out 10 steps hold empty now on the way out as you're exhaling you let your abdomen gradually relax outward so that by the time you get to the to number 10 you're completely empty even squeezy like that a little bit but completely empty right and then you start over again then you go and you hold it the whole time you've got it down there you keep it way down your lower back i'm going to keep it there all right Seven, eight, nine, ten, and now I'm going to exhale. If you want to, you can go. Don't forget to count and make sure you're absolutely completely empty by the time you get to ten. You can do exercises like. 
Bum 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 Now hold it empty with the belly out and the ribs closing. And during all this process, you want the upper uh, body to remain stationary. You don't want to swell it up when you breathe and you don't want to collapse it when you exhale. Uh, in Vienna, there was a very popular school for a while where you would um, uh, drop your chest while you're inhaling and you'd go, and you start to sing, you'd, you'd, throw, you'd do your, throw your chest out. It was called the, the chest thrust. And you'd go, no. Christa Ludwig used that, famous German mezzo. Had a wonderful, whatever, 50 year career singing like that. She's the only one I knew, though, who was really successful doing that breathing method. The one I'm talking about today, they call the Caruso Walk, because it's the one that Caruso used, and any number of, sing of singers have used uh, one form or another of this inhale and hold, exhale and hold. A lot of singers do it in the water. Uh, Corelli did it, uh, Kirsten Flockstad did it uh, in the water, swimming, long distance swimming. So uh, Caruso, of course, was a deep diver, a free diver, no equipment. Sometimes he's a little child, he was diving for coins. And then he dove in the deep, deep part of the Bay of Naples as he got older. So he had tremendous breath development, obviously greater than most people, uh, and had a fabulous voice. They say the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. So he had great big drums, right? That sucking in power that you do trains the throat to relax and do this. And it opens vertically and the larynx goes down. The larynx is drawn down by the stream of air that you're inhaling. You don't have to lower your larynx with muscles like that. Hi. That's the way I sang. In, and when I was at the university, I sang that way. I sang as a bass. We are fancy, we are right? But the old idea is you're supposed to be no activity in the throat, jaw, or tongue. Right? The first rule of the Belcanto school was no, was no action in the throat, jaw, or tongue, which means I have to breathe, uh, and, and I'm not allowed to do anything up here, see? So singers, they go, oh, and oh, oh, ah, and all this stuff they're doing, oh, oh, it was absolutely forbidden in the Belcanto school. And I know because I've studied with t students who, were st who studied with students of great, sing of great teachers from the Belcanto era. Like Lamperti and, and, and Manuel Garcia II, for instance, right? But the, but the point is today to learn to do this breathing that you do and practice it with every kind of inhalation, exhalation you can. Just make sure you count all the time. If you can get in the swimming pool and swim, do 10 strokes. Uh, uh, well, actually, it's hard to do 10 strokes and hold your breath that long. It depends on the, on the, on the person. If you can do it, then breathe and hold the breath for 10 strokes and then exhale for 10 strokes, and then put your head out of the water and breathe for 10 strokes. You can do, the, you can do that sort of thing. Um, so singers that, that uh, when they're young start playing saxophone or French horn or something like that, uh, they can outdo us all, and the rest of us have to train the breath uh, to, be key, to sustain. Remember, we want capacity, so we want to be able to finish phrases and sing yeah, phrases uh, easily and not be tired at the end of it. Uh, we do, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. So the more air I can get inside, the more overtones I have and more vibra vibrating air I have in my body, the better. One of the Caruso quotes was, he said, you've got to feel the breath vibrating all down inside your body. And that was part of the, of the kind of tone that he, that he was making and that he wanted to make. If I blow my breath out, if I, if I can get a big breath in and go, I didn't do anything different up here. I did nothing up here in both cases, but one of them is a bigger, rounder sound because I had a big bucket of air underneath it. So the idea is if you can, you get yourself practicing uh, this all day. This is something you really can do all the time. Now, Helio Rosslinger was a fabulous, well, they think maybe the greatest singer in the history of Europe, because Caruso was in America, it was in Europe, who knows? Maybe there was a great thing, nobody knew if one would be better than the other or not. 
So uh, Mel Laos Melchior told me that, uh, of course, he was the number one held in tenor in, in history, and he said the greatest voice, and he sang with Flockstad and all kinds of great people, and he said the greatest voice he ever heard was Helge Rosvange. And uh, it's very interesting because Rosvange has a whole uh, exaggerated breathing uh, search was based on yoga. He did yoga three hours every day. He did an hour in the morning or an hour in the evening. Sometimes in the middle of the night after a performance, he'd come home and he'd do an hour and a half of yoga at night because he'd already done his hour and a half in the morning before rehearsal. So he used to rehearse in the morning, make records in the afternoon, and sing a performance at night. And he did it seven days a week uh, for about 55 years. And uh, I asked him, how is such a thing possible? He said, yoga. I said, but what do you do? What do, you do? I, I don't understand. He said, I just breathe. I breathe like I've trained myself in yoga breathing, and I do it uh, every day of my life for three hours. And I do all the postures. He said, I posture. And the posture makes you develop your breathing in all these different ways. So here's Mr. Mel uh, Mr. Caruso doing it one way, which was just walk down the street and pull, breathe in for 10, hold for 10 seconds, or 10 steps. We're going to say 10 steps now because you're walking. So breathe in for 10 steps. Hold it for 10 steps, blow out or let it out for 10 steps, exhale for 10 steps, in other words, and then hold empty for 10 steps. If you do that, now the, the swimmers, uh, Flockstad was a, 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 and, and uh, Franco Corelli, and of course Caruso, were all super ocean swimmers. Well, they were, uh, uh, Flockstad swam in, the, in the, those big lakes in, in Scandinavia, in Norway. Uh, and, uh, and, but Caruso, John Sutherland, Nellie Melba, uh, Franco Corelli, these were all ocean swimmers, and they all were long-distance swimmers. And isn't it a funny coincidence that they end up with these fabulous voices? I mean, who was the second most beautiful tenor voice in the world? They think Benjamin Gili. Well, you can debate that, who you like and who you don't, but one thing Gili did is he played the saxophone for, for his whole life. Fritz Wunderlich was the greatest uh, a Mozart tenor that I've heard, what the, what the Italians call it, uh, a lirico leggero, a light lyric. And, uh, and what they, the Germans called ein leichter tenor, a light tenor, right? But he played uh, French horn for 30 years. Now think about that. When you hear these people with these voices and you realize there's hardly ever one that comes only this has it and, and didn't exercise. The people do swim, they do, they, they play, you know, some kind of wind instrument, they do something exaggerated that, or yoga, that trains them the breathing. So the more you breathe, the more capacity you have, you have more overtones because your the vibrations inside your body are more, so you have a, usually a rounder, more beautiful sound, right? You have uh, tremendous stamina because these muscles, because you exercise the breathing muscles so much all the time, the singing actually gets easy. And even a big opera that's difficult, you still have more stamina and you don't get tired toward the end of the opera if you do your breathing exercises every day, especially when you're young, right? Um, you think, and then the flexibility. You want to do coloratura, something like that, a lot of flexibility or, or easy, uh, uh, wide octaves, things like that. You want to intensify a tone. What do we do it with? We do it with the breath. I've been talking, you know, a lot about uh, diaphragmatic leans and all kinds of things. And... Uh, if I take a breath behind me, and it's a big one, you know, Tetrosini said, imagine you have a ladder, and you, the, the, the column of breath, column of air, is a ladder, and you're going to lean it over against, and prop it up against your sternum, right? So I go, now, if I have tons of air when I breathe, in other words, once it goes in the body or, or comes out of the body, we call it breath. Otherwise, it's air. I cannot form the air. There's all this air out here, and I can't shape it. So I have to use my breathing muscles, my, the, 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 what, what Caruso called the massive power of the respiration. And I have to do that in order to get the muscles to do what they do, to, to, to create for me an air bucket, an air box, an air column, uh, what Tetrasini called a ladder, right? Uh, the idea is that breathing, uh, when it, Richard Tucker sang a great big high note for me one day, and he said, he said, see, the voice does nothing. The breath does everything. 
So all this business about opening your mouth like this, what does that do to your breathing? I'm going to breathe. Now, can I sing or not? No, not unless I do this. What, what is that? What is that supposed to do? I used to have a New Zealand colleague. He sang Tristan and Tannhäuser and Siegfried. All these monster, long, long operas. And I said, I said, I've known a few British Empire singers. He was from New Zealand, and and I've, I've taught any number of British singers, good ones, professional ones. And I said, you guys have a some kind of tradition that you don't open your mouth so much. Some of you sing like you're singing through a slit. Also, uh, uh, Christa Ludwig was accused of singing through a slit a few times like this. Mouth hardly open. So these British singers would go like that. See? And the mouth hardly opens. It's barely open like that. So I asked my New Zealand colleague, I was uh, singing the middleweights and he was singing all the big heavy dramatic ones. I said, why is it all the singers that, are, that I see and hear from the British Empire seem to keep their mouths more closed than the other singers do? He said, well, you know, mate, think about it like this, mate. You want resonance, don't you? Yeah. What they're called singing in the mosque. He said, think about it for a moment. If I open the barn door, the cow will get out. So if I do this, he said, my resonance comes under the mask and comes out of my mouth. So I'm singing darker and bigger. And nobody can hear me. Oh, they do hear me. It's just a big, dark, woofy sound. He said, you don't want the sound to be narrow. You don't want, and you don't want, try doing nothing was his idea, right? So this way of breathing that I'm talking about, this 40-step walk, if you really do it all the time, you'll be amazed. Now think about it. We're talking about a lifetime here. We're not about you know, doing it for a week or two and say, oh, well, it didn't really work that much. I think I'll just forget it. Well, guess what? You're not going to be a serious, highly developed singer in your old age. I can tell you that. You have to begin now and just just remember Rosvang, three hours a day of yoga. I mean, uh, Caruso apparently did the 40-step walk for an hour and a half every day, rain or shine. And then he, he did some swimming. He was, an, as, a, as an uh, adult, as a very, uh, you know, developed celebrity, he didn't swim as much, apparently, but he always did his breathing walk. So, all, but all he did you know, really fanatical swimming uh, when he was young. So, who knows? Anyway, the idea is that, you know, Nikolai Yorov had a fabulous voice and he played trombone and clarinet. Uh, Giovanni Martinelli had, they called him the hammer. His voice was so huge in the theater. It was like, it was like a bomb going off. Uh, he's the one that took Caruso's place at the Metropolitan Opera when Caruso died. Uh, and uh, he played clarinet. So you, you keep finding all of these people. Even I played uh, tuba. I played tuba and uh, and the long the big mic the big harmonicas, you know. But um, the idea is that a kind any kind of exaggerated activity in your breathing uh, will 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 help develop the roundness, beauty, range, power, capacity, stamina, all these things that we need to be singers. You have to remember how long some of these operas are and how dramatic they are. Some of them start off with a bang. That's the first note in Carlo from by Verdi for, for the tenor. He's already, he's already frantic and suffering, you know. And this goes on all night. You should see something like, here we get a chance, go see Queen of Spades by Tchaikovsky. You will not believe what the tenor has to do. He sings an hour and a half in the first act. Just the first act. Then you've got two more monster acts to go, and the second one is the big one. And then you have orchestra problems. You have, you have uh, I remember I did Damnation Faust in Frankfurt, and uh, there's a big aria right at the end, the, the Ode to Nature. And uh, you wouldn't believe the orchestration. So like about 150 players, everybody playing 14, you're down in your middle voice the whole time. You need all kinds of projection and metal in the voice and carrying power, but you also, more than anything else, you need the kind of volume that a bigger drum gives you. If I play a little drum very loud, it still sounds like a little drum. And if I play a great big drum loud, it sounds big and loud, but I can also play it very softly, and it still sounds like a big drum. 
So the idea is to get these great big drums working for you, and it will put a combination of metal and color on the voice that is simply not there if you're if you're a shallow breather. A lot of breather, a lot of singers are trying so much to focus and go. Well, if they get it, so what? It sounds terrible. Then they have to do something in the throat to get some color. So they go, nye, 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 nye. and they start raising the soul palate. Nye, 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 nye. And you realize how the jaw is going down now. Nye, 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 nye. And all it's all that tracheal resonance and throat resonance, and it doesn't carry worth a darn. Right? Anyway. These breathing exercises that people do, I can only recommend yoga to everybody who wants to sing. Play a wind or brass instrument, preferably a middleweight, not one of the really hard, difficult ones. The really difficult ones are, are oboe and French horn. And I think anybody that plays those should have started back when they were six years old, like Fritz Wunderlich. And apparently Gigli started playing saxophone when he was eight. But anything you do as a hobby, if you start now playing these wind instruments as a ho or brass as a hobby, um, I played bugle when I was in the army. I played uh, I played uh, bass horn, French sousaphone, marching bass, and the tuba, uh, and and uh, the you know they 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 help. Trouble with the uh, tuba, the big instruments like that, the big heavy when you're going boom 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 boom, especially the marching sousaphone, which is a great big tuba, one that wraps around your shoulder and has a big bell up here and they march with it. Uh, but there's not any sustaining. It's mostly just giving the fundamental of the beat, you know? So if you can practice breathing, some singers just will breathe as long as they can and then hold it as long as they can and then blow it out or let it out or relax it out or sigh it out, right? As long as they can. And then hold empty as long as they can. The whole sigh method that uh, Tito Schipa and uh, Claudio Muzzo used, and Caruso uh, used one form of the sign method uh, when he was uh, at a certain stage in his career. He used it a lot. He talks about it, talked about it in his book. And Benjamino Gili and Naldi Volpi and uh, uh, even, even Tomaldi when she sang lyrically. She did that when she had lyric music to sing, which was, of course, she was phenomenal. Uh, they used sighing as the exhalation. So they'd go, Ah, now how long can you sigh? Breathe. Ah. How long you can develop your sigh inward and outward. If I breathe way down behind me, I'm always breathing behind me, like my buttocks are balloons, I want to breathe way down low. Um, and you breathe down there and you you... Some people use a tummy tuck. Some people just pull in the abdomen. It's in the Lamperti, famous Lamperti teaching book where he draws the navel inward, which is very interesting. It's Pavarotti saying it on his navel. It's very interesting. And I don't know if he got that, where he got that, or read a book or what. But uh, or then there, there are all these different ways to pull in. Uh, some people pull in the epigastrium and they go. Some people pull in way down uh, right at the navel and then below the navel. In the abdominal uh, chakra, if you're doing yoga, you would do the abdominal chakra and you'd breathe in. When you start to sing, you let it out. How are you today? Well, I'm just sighing. I'm sighing down on whatever place I've chosen to exhale, where I'm going to exhale. That means I do nothing up here. I don't focus. I don't lift. I don't do the soft palate. I don't do anything. I'll let the breath do everything, like Mr. Richard Tucker said. See, the breathing does everything. So if I go, all I'm doing is sighing. That sigh was from the navel down. Some people sigh from the throat down to the um, the bottom of the sternum, right here. And for the navel down is Then they're sliding back and down, which is a form of sighing down the spine. 
la la! So I'm sorry, absolutely. Now, don't forget that every one of these has to do with breathing. So we want to do the 40-step walk to constantly develop the breathing. So as you go through this encyclopedia, which we're attempting to make, we'll hope it'll work. But anyway, we're starting with this one. And we want to get everybody breathing first, so it's a good one, a place to start. You, you have to take a breath, you can't make a sound. If, uh, even, even if I don't breathe, so I, have, I blow half my breath up. Now, if I'm going to make a sound, a singing sound, guess what? I have to squeeze or push. The Italian word is push, spingly. And, uh, and most English-speaking people like to translate that as squeeze. Squeeze the rib cage in the back. But that's what they call spinto singing or spinto voice, spinto tenor, spinto soprano. They are squeezers or pushers. Now, so I'm going to exhale. And now I'm going to, I've got to get the sound out. So I have to squeeze to get the sound out. So I go. La, 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 la. But the point is, I can't make a sound unless I have air. So I should be developing my air out to here if I can. Huge air bucket way down. My old teacher, Olga Ries, would say, water for Botox. And I said, sit down on. She said, no, for to breathe into. Like big weather balloons. The idea is to get the breath way on not only down in placement, down low in the back and low in the, in the lungs and way down in the lower ribs and as low as you can suck the air down there. Right. And that is only one part of one component. The other component is capacity and stamina. You can't get tired when you sing, see? And then you're improving your color. Your voice is getting bigger and rounder. And then come all these challenges. And people say, my gosh, your voice is so big. You can sing uh, with me. It was always, oh, you're a young Heldon tenor. You can sing all that stuff that Melchior is saying. I said, I can't sing any of the stuff that Melchior is saying. What are you saying? <laughs> you're crazy. You know? So, you know, so I did end up singing Parsi Fall and Lohan Grin and Mites, a singer. Uh, and what Melchior said, when we I talked about Melchior, I, I, I sang for him to get try to get win some money in his, in his prize. It was a Heldon tenor contest, you know? And, uh, but it wasn't a contest. You just came in and sang. If you qualified, you'd get $50,000. That was like a fortune. It's still a fortune. But in those days, it was like, you know, 350000 three, 350, $350,000. I mean, it was so much money you can't imagine. Anyway, I sang for him, and I sang Lohengrin. He said, you are not a lyric. Uh, you are not a Helen tenor. You are a lyric tenor. Okay. Big, full boy. Big, full boy. But still lyric. It is not heroic. He said, you must not try to sing this kind of music. He said, one day soon, you will be able to sing Lohengrin, Mites a singer. You know, the easy ones, the easy ones. I thought, oh God. <laughs> the, I kept thinking about remembering that later on when I sang Mites a singer, and it was five and a half hours long. And believe me, you are dragging every part of your body, not just your tail. <laughs> You're dragging everything. They ask, they ask uh, Birger Nelson, what does it take to be a great Wagner singer? And she said, I thought they were going to say voice, you know, big, powerful voice. Something she said, a good pair of shoes. Oh, that's what we use. About that, about the, 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 the famous uh, aria for the tenor, the pride song, uh, comes in about five hours and 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know if you know that music. Morgenlich leicht and rosy and shine. Just the aria is what, 14 minutes long. Got four verses and every one of them goes up and then uh, I, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's really, that is pure stamina stuff and you've got to have a big enough sound to sing it without having to strain anything. So again, we're back to breathing, aren't we? You need more breath, a bigger breath. You need bigger drums, a bigger drum. I don't have to play so loud all the time. I can play a really big drum, medium power. So my old teacher, Olga Ries, would say, everything middle power, middle power. Once in a while, a little note here. Once in a while, a big note there. Everything else is middle power. See? If you're going to do some kind of uh, crescendo, de crescendo exercise, you... No. How much breath do I need to keep the color of my voice the whole time when I'm loud and when I'm soft? And what percentage of that should I be performing with? No way I can sing 100% all the time. I get exhausted. I, no way I can sing small like that all the time. The orchestra's blasting away. I've got to give voice sometimes too. 
So what you want to do is find your middle power in a crescendo de crescendo, and then sing the repertoire <coughs> that is where your voice is adequate for the entire repertoire of that category, what the Germans call Fach. Fach really means a, a category, right? A drawer in a, a drawer in a, in a desk is, is also a kind of a Fach. It all depends. Those slots where you put the letters in, those are all Fächer, right? So there is a kind of, Fach just means a, a, a designated section, and I think we would use category most of the time in English. So what's your vocal category? See? And they've got a bunch of them in Germany because they've got so much repertoire over there. I did 64 operas there, and I did all kinds of big concerts, like Very Wequim and Das Lied von der Erde by Mahler. Big, you know, big stuff. And of course, Kuyusana, or not Kuyusana, the Stop at Mahler of Rossini. Uh, I, I did all those things. The Damnation of Faust of Berlioz. Those are all big things. Well, you can't get up and yell your way through these. You will get exhausted and, and probably damage your voice, if not tonight, next year, next year. But voices get ruined that have to push all the time on them. And uh, so the idea is to breathe so much that you can sing with middle power and have stamina to get through those, those performances of concerts or operas, whatever they are, without any problem. And the more you breathe and the bigger your drums, the less effort you have to give. Especially if you get so good that you can just sigh. By so good, I mean, if you can have such breath capacity that your drums are big enough that you can just sigh. And I can go, ah, and that's all the effort I have to do. La, 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 but it's so held in tenor, folks. Just because I can sing and be heard, maybe perhaps in a theater over an orchestra, doesn't mean I'm held in tenor. I sang in Darmstadt, Germany, which those of you who know it's sort of middle sized. Uh, theater, middle important theater. I did Traviata there, and the two men came back and said, Mr. Trimble, we're from Hannover, uh, and next year we want to do Siegfried, young Siegfried, and Tannhäuser, and would you do them for us? And I said, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> they said, oh yes, oh yes, so we, we're looking for a strong, very strong tenor to sing this, these for us. And I said, look, please, you know, I am no way I'm, that I'm a heroic tenor like that. No way I can do I can do this. So in, in middle voice all night with occasional high C or something. I said, you know, you can't sing the middle the middle voice over 130 players playing forte all the time and do it for hours and hours. And not if you want to sing next year or the year after. I said, but your voice is so big in the back of the theater. I said, but that's that. You know, it is not big. It's just metallic enough that it's carrying back there. You know. I mean, you go to Italy and all they talk about is, is, is uh, um, they call it, call, call it squillo, which means ring. And they keep talking about the voice is squillante, and they keep saying, la voce corre, the voice runs, it runs, right? And so I want my voice to run with squillo, and I'm going to get out there and have to do this, and I have to do it so loud. A lot of singers must take uh, uh, the voice, ba, 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 hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. And that's really the voice right there, right? And a lot of people think that that's the voice right there. And the reason I know about that is because I sang as a bass in college. Can you imagine? Don't sing like that. There was old oh, young bass, really fantastic. Blah, blah. And then every time one violin would play or something, nobody could hear me. I was totally inaudible. I sang for Matt Carroll, a very famous concert singer. And, uh, and I sang for him, and, and he said, What are you doing? <laughs> Anyway, that's another whole story. I, I want everyone to realize that breath, 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 breath uh, is con it's really, we're like contained breath instruments that we send out, uh, we're sort of a combination. We have to contain and hold a lot of breath, and then we have to give minute amounts of paper. If, you know, one of the oldest exercises in the history of singing was to hold a match flame in front of your lips like this, and the flame is not supposed to move. So nowadays we use Kleenex. We use, you know, tissue paper like this, see? So I go, I'm gonna go down down to get the between all the three later. And I can sing all day long like that, and the paper will never move. Because there is no uh, excess air coming out. Nothing comes out but converted air that has been converted into tone. So only tone comes out. And the rest of the breath is kept down in the lower back, which makes the diaphragm go down like this. And doubled, so I went to the pulmonologist, and he said, oh, that'll double your breath capacity. I said, well, thanks very much for telling me about that. <laughs> All right? That's something to think about. Breathe. Okay, bye. Mm.